Okay, I wanted to do a short video, um, kind of discussing how I put the table together and maybe give you guys a few tips if you want to do this yourself. Um, as you can see, the latest generation of the kit uses these uh, angle brackets. I think they're directly from 8020. Um, the uh, cross members um, of the table are one and a half by three inch aluminum extrusions, and then the long side are one and a half by four and a half extrusions that everything is attached to. And um, uh, getting the table is a little bit uh, assembled with everything being nice and square and everything is a bit of a challenge because it's large, it's ungainly. Um, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about how I did that so that if you decide you want to do this, maybe you can do it the same way or if you have other ideas, that's great too. Um, anyway, the, uh, the first thing that I did was lay out all of the brackets on this side well, one one of the side of the I can't remember which one it was. I think it may, may have been this side, on on both um, sides of the uh, table, and uh, kind of get those all measured out and spaced so that I had a reference point to butt the um, the the pieces up against, and I knew it would be relatively square along the length. Um, um, so I attached, you know, these couple of bolts here and left these, um, undone and slid the, ga the, the cross members in and then added this plate after that. But, uh, there was kind of a little bit of a process that I went through to ensure that everything was, you know, nice and tight and square. Um, these pieces come from uh, the 80 or from the CNC router parts factory somewhere out in Oregon and they're very they're precision cut um, and they're very square so it's um, uh, important that the crowns on these uh, members here um, there is a crown on these uh, it's important that they end up touching um, the end here so that this piece is vertical and square to this piece which you need to have your gantry square so in order to accomplish that um, I don't know if you guys saw um, I had a rope that was laying on the floor here in one of the earlier videos and what I used that for was um, I kinda came through that space there down along to the other space and up over the top and then tied it off and then I put a wrench through the rope um, this way and spun it um, this way so that I kind of created a skein clamp and then I stuck the wrench end underneath one of the members so that it would stay and that kind of helped me pull the ends together and then what I did after I did that I got uh, well these bolts but on the other side tightened up so that it, everything was nice and um, uh, tight and then I got these put on um, so that that worked actually really pretty well um, you do have to be a little bit careful when you get started because you do have a larger lever arm coming off the top than on the bottom but since you pass the center point on these it uh, doesn't really matter um, it, it holds it square uh, and does a pretty good job um, but then uh, after I did that, I went through and um, loosened one side of these bolts and, um, and then I kind of pulled the angle bracket away from here by, I don't know, like a 64th of an inch, not too much, and then really tighten these things down, these, these bolts here, and then after that, uh, tighten these down. Um, and that kind of created a little bit of a spring. You know, there's a little bit of um, a spring force, and you can actually, I don't know if you can kind of see that or not, but there actually is a small gap in the corner there, and it, it pulls out um, and goes flush at the end. Um, let me see if I can focus that a little bit better. There we go. So there's a little bit of a gap, and it comes out. So I did that, and then 
um, I went back after I did this side I went and did this side so now there's actually a little bit of a spring force in these angle brackets that pulls the whole thing in um, to to uh, the uh, edge here um, and uh, I noticed that some of the there there is a little bit of a gap um, on some of these members one side touches on this end and not the other and I'm not sure if that was just the fact that these may not have been cut exactly perfectly square or what have you but anyway it's as tight as it's gonna get um, now and it'll stay tight because of that the way that I um, spaced that out um, and uh, the other thing that I did too I forgot to mention um, I made a little block here um, made a little block and uh, it's just nothing but quarter inch Baltic birch ply I just cut out from uh, with my my jigsaw and drill the hole in and um, uh, this hole is to accept a uh, t-nut t-slot or a t-stud with one of these bolts on it and there's a uh, a slot underneath here and I just made two of these up and I put them up underneath here and tightened them down so that when I set them in they would be flush on the bottom um, all of them would end up flush in the same the same plane from relative to the bottom here so I did that on each end and supported it and that way I could do it by myself um, so yeah uh, that was pretty good um, I don't know if you've been following the build log at all uh, either but um, uh, it looks like there's quite a few people on there that have are planning or really seriously considering getting a uh, this kit from CNC router parts and I would wholeheartedly recommend it um, it is a great kit it is a very solid machine um, a couple of points though that I would make is that I think you do want to support the uh, long axis along the length on each side because um, I noticed that when I was only when I was calibrating everything and planarizing it I loosened all of the other bolts except for the ones that are on the very end on this support here and that when that gantry was in the middle I noticed uh, some flexure um, I don't think you guys have to go quite as nuts supporting it like I did I did like I think every foot or so along the axis um, uh, but uh, I think maybe three or four points along the length should be good um, and then the other thing is I do think you want to try and support these aluminum table members in the middle because um, uh, with a little bit of weight on them they can flex down and I don't think you really want to have that um, but uh, um, if you were wondering I think the cost of this table was about two hundred and eighty two hundred ninety dollars I probably could have saved a little bit more money um, if I didn't have to do things twice <laughs> But uh, anyway, um, I learned um, Aaron does make a, uh, a table kit, and I think it's got a post on, on the four corners and one in the middle um, on that side. Uh, I actually think that my table is probably stiffer and stronger um, than most. Um, I know that you guys may not think that plywood is all that strong, but there's what... I don't know, uh, there's a two foot uh, length of plywood in the, in the vertical direction and that stuff is really pretty stiff. The moment of inertia is pretty large. Um, so it's a pretty stiff beam in the vertical direction and that's what you need. Um, so anyway, I mean this, this table is, doesn't move now at all now that I've got those center members in and the uh, plywood on the bottom. I had my friend come over and he tried to shake it as hard as he could and I couldn't see it move at all. <laughs> so um, this isn't a bad idea, uh, design. Um, I would say that it probably wastes space, uh, more space than I wanted it to, um, especially in here. But uh, I'll get a set of drawers and storage on this side and um, I'll probably put um, 
I'll probably put a piece of aluminum in the back right up um, under here when I when I cut the drawers out to, to help stiffen that up and keep it stiff uh, when I have an opening there um, but yeah I mean it's it's a it's a pretty good table pretty good design I like it a lot so um, till next time uh, Merry Christmas uh, it's Christmas Eve today so um, I guess I'll talk to you guys later have a good holiday Bye.